Hello, good evening, everyone. So today we are going to start off with a very like interesting topic which happened very recently, and it's a very proud thing for us as well. The thing is that ISRO is likely to launch what seven satellites. It already has done uh, like the launching of some of the satellites, and like it is going to launch some more as well. Hmm? But the thing is, why this thing is a very big news, and why it's a very interesting news for us as well. Okay, so we are going to discuss that. Let's talk about this. And the first thing which we are going to talk about, let me tell you actually what happened. Hmm? So the like what, ISRO has actually launched a Earth observation satellite. So I will majorly will just tell you it's an observation satellite. More about this we will talk uh, in the whole session. But yes, right now I'm just telling you it's an observation satellite. Hmm? And it was launched on 14th Feb. But during the whole span of this year, ISRO is going to launch some more satellites as well. Hmm? Over here, the first and foremost, like we can say, the first thing which we have to understand is the altitude of this particular satellite. If you will see that the altitude of this satellite is not very big. Hmm? It's only 524 kilometers. Why I'm saying only 524 kilometers? Because we all know when I'm talking about Earth. Hmm? So for Earth, the radius of the earth is considered to be what 6400 kilometers okay approximately so in comparison to that this distance is actually small and if this distance is actually small we say that this satellite is very close to the surface of earth we comparatively say that and it's very uh, interesting to understand it that why we are keeping these satellites very close to us because we have to observe earth we majorly have to observe the surface of earth the things which are happening on the surface of earth okay so before starting it before starting it in detail let's talk about some of the very interesting things that is like how many satellites already are there uh, at the space or at the orbits hmm? if you will see there uh, us us has uh, like sent 1308 satellites whereas india has sent 58 and even china is ahead of us but this thing is not to worry about everyone this data is from april 2020 so as you can clearly see slowly and gradually we were we are like we will do very good and everything will be happening very good with us okay so that is it it's a very proud moment for us as well so i will just tell you this simple data is yes, that so many countries have like uh, launched so many satellites already hmm? and even india has launched a lot of satellites now if you will see a lot of satellites in the space are of no use now what i will say that most of the set like not most of the but a lot of satellites approximately 3000 satellites till date and even more than that this is a raw data so 3000 satellites are considered to be the space junk now why do i why will i say that as a space junk because these are over there they are just like dust or something which has no use at all they are just dead satellites okay so this was some basic data about satellite but yes this can come in your mind that what is satellite basically has like what is its use so i think most of you already know that what is the use of a satellite there are phenomenally like there are a lot of uses already hmm? but the most important for all of us is internet yes all the internet all the google maps everything is working through the satellites only so i don't think that any one of you does not know about the uses of satellite but yes it's very interesting to know about it but see if already there are so many satellites and if they are doing so well so what's the need and what's the uh, like the reason that the isro is actually sending so many satellites in the uh, in the same year what's the reason behind it so let's talk about this now the first satellite which is already there which is successfully launched is eos4 it's known as eos4 but what is, is its purpose its purpose is it is a imaging satellite hmm? now if it is a imaging satellite i will come to it that imaging satellite is something which is designed to provide very high quality images hmm? so what it is going to do is it is going to take very 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 high quality images and that will simply help us in a lot of areas and which areas it will help us it will help us in the like regular things which we actually have a lot of use in our life that we will talk about but yes now let's talk about this that 
okay if this is a imaging satellite it's taking very high quality images so how is it doing that thing how is it taking very high quality images what's the reason how how is it actually doing it so all of you you might have heard about electromagnetic spectrum we all have heard about it we have heard about gamma rays we have heard about x rays we have heard about microwaves we have heard about radio waves and all of this and even if you don't remember this particular part i will tell you one thing you, which you might uh, know that yes vibgyor kind of thing vibgyor that this particular color is violet whereas this color is what red there is a whole color spectrum over here which represents how many color are there hmm? now exactly in this particular spectrum in this particular thing you will see that we also represent it by the frequency and wavelength as well and just not by going in extreme detail of it i will just say that you know that red has the highest wavelength the wavelength of red red is actually what highest whereas if i am talking about violet the wavelength of the violet is actually what minimum it's minimum you all guys know it whereas if i am talking about frequency the frequency of violet is actually maximum whereas frequency of the red one is what minimum hmm? you all know it exactly from this spectrum we have to choose a band okay i am not choosing a specific frequency i am choosing a band hmm? which is approximately 5.7 gigahertz and over here this satellite also works on that band as well it is working on 5.4 gigahertz approximately that region only but over there i will just tell you there are multiple bands there is a x band there is a c band s band l band but not at all a problem i will just tell you okay a certain frequency uh, it works on a certain frequency which is very good for detailed images whenever you click images it uh, comes out to be very high quality images that is why it's using that particular band hmm? now what is the use case i was coming to that so the use case of these satellites are very very important it will help us in what it will help us in agriculture it will help us in disaster management it will help us in water resources and it will also help us in what forestry and all of that things okay so all of these things it will actually help me hmm? so overall you can understand see whenever i say something like this you have to understand it that these areas always have a scope for improvement you will say that sir we already have very good amount of ample amount of dams resources and all of that but is there any scope of improvement yes is there any is there any scope of improvement for disaster management yes is there any scope for improvement for agriculture yes so that is why these satellites are working they like they are working very fine they are like increasing their technology so that these things can simply improve okay and it's very good for us these things will improve and specifically agriculture it is a very good thing like if uh, if i integrate agriculture with technology it becomes very good hmm? so this was the first satellite now let's talk about the second one the second one is known as ins 2td now the ins 2td is a nano satellite so as the name suggests the size of this is actually small okay but yes just keep it in mind it's a small nano satellite and it's not the actual satellite okay it's not something which we are going to use for a very long amount of time no it's just a precursor for the india bhutan joint satellite which is going to be launched this satellite is going to be launched and it's basically a precursor to it precursor means it will make a base for the upcoming satellite so that that satellite already has a base okay that in these areas the new satellite or the ins 2b which is going to be launched it needs to work on those particular areas hmm? so it's just a precursor or you can say a base for it so that a new satellite will come and it will start working on that base hmm? now let's talk about the second thing the second thing is having a thermal imaging camera all of you know what is a thermal imaging camera we all have seen it in movies and all of that and now in real life we require this a lot because we have to check temperatures of people every day every day we have to check it just because of covid so yes whenever we do it we see that okay uh, using it we can tell the temperature of people and we can uh, have a lot of uses but now exactly this will use that thermal imaging camera using the temperature and all of that for telling me a lot of things for assessing a lot of things so that is 
लैंड सरफेस टेम्परेचर वॉटर सरफेस टेम्परेचर डिलीनिएशन ऑफ वेजिटेशन थर्मल एनर्जी एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट ओके I will just show you one example. This is a photo from Gujarat, a normal photo, but a photo taken by a thermal imaging camera, which clearly shows which areas are actually hot, whereas which areas are like comparatively cold. So thermal imaging actually tells me like uh, what is the temperature variation, how is it going to affect the vegetation and wetlands, lakes, these types of things. So it is very useful, very helpful for all of us, hmm? and. the last and the third satellite which we are going to talk about is inspire sat 1 what is inspire sat 1 so first of all i will just tell you all of us we have learned about troposphere where the uh, aeroplanes actually like they uh, fly the next thing is stratosphere then mesosphere thermosphere exosphere we have a lot of things hmm? but now the inspire sat 1 will actually be there in like it will start studying the earth's ionosphere it will start studying the this particular region of earth and why will it study it because there are multiple reasons behind it what are the multiple reasons because first of all it will also help us in understanding why sun's corona is orders of magnitude hotter than the photosphere okay i am not understanding anything let me explain you what does that means so if we actually see the surface of what uh, Uh, sun when we see it there are two things we are majorly going to talk about hmm? one thing is the corona whereas the another thing is the photosphere now if you will see these two things very carefully the photosphere approximately lies on the surface whereas the corona actually is above the surface it's slightly above the surface now exactly this thing what is the reason that the corona is slightly hotter whereas why the photosphere is less hot this particular thing will actually be studied by our inspire sat 1 this will help us in understanding that why the sun corona is actually hotter than the photosphere it will help like because right now there is not that much of clear answer to it so it will give us that answer now second point that it will work on is the why there is a abundance of elements change during different solar events okay right now i will just tell you a simple solar event all of you are aware of that is eclipse hmm? either it's lunar eclipse solar eclipse and all of that you all know that what is eclipse now whenever something like this actually happens whenever there is a solar event this is a solar event everyone during that there is a lot of abundance of element change we all see that it's natural it's a factual kind of thing so yes this will also give us the answer that why is there abundance of elements change during a different solar event mm -hmm. and the last thing it is going to help us is what how these events affect the earth's ionosphere which means that whenever like a event like solar eclipse lunar eclipse or anything like that actually happens how is it affecting the ionosphere of earth how is it affecting this region of the earth how is it changing that so the answers to these questions i am not giving you the inspire sat 1 is going to give you the answer to these questions but one answer i can give to all of you is like what the excellence of us that is our skyitians everyone so yes uh, like we are also starting with a grade 11 batch recently okay so we are going to start it uh, as soon as the exams are going to end and yes everyone uh, this this is our very 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 recent results and you can see it's phenomenal it's very good so yes on the basis of that if you want to join the ask itians you all can join it for your je preparation for your neat preparation for these types of preparation please join ask itians thank you so much for joining everyone